Hi there and welcome to Wade's Workshop and here we are the first part of the compound slide replacement block. Why am I replacing the compound slide um, is the first thing I'm going to answer. Um, it's been done by many engineers in the past. How often do I use the compound slide? Not that often and it's going to be quick and simple to change it over anyway back to the compound. So that's why I'm replacing it. Um, the advantage of having a solid block instead of the compound is it removes probably what is the weakest link in rigidity on these little mini lathes, uh, which is a compound slide. So replacing it with a solid block will shore everything up, make everything a lot more rigid, and we'll see what the end results are when I've finished. But um, I'm pretty sure it's going to make a world of difference to uh, straight turning on the lathe. So that's basically why I'm replacing the compound slide. Right, okay, let's show you the material and get straight on with it. So my piece of cast iron has arrived and it measures up at probably about 80.5 by 80.5 and it's about 40.5 to 41 mil thick. Um, finish size is approximately 35 thick but it will have a circular boss sticking up in the centre so I'm quite limited as to the amount of material I can machine off this. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is get a flat surface. Now it's sawn cut both sides and it is actually fairly flat um, you know not a bad saw cut probably done on a, on a you know a quality um, metal cutting saw of some description. Um, so it shouldn't be too much to clean this up. So I think what I'm going to do is hold it in the fore jaw, tap it back, get it somewhere near square on the outside edges. Um, the jaws should take care of that to square it up to a certain degree and just flash off one side uh, by taking a facing cut. So we'll get that set up in the lathe now. So I've got it set up in the fore jaw, running roughly true. It's not dead fussy because it's just a flat surface, no details on it. I've got a piece of uh, paper towel underneath don't use a rag underneath your chuck. Paper towel is ideal and it'll just keep the, um, the, you know, the cast dust off the bed of the lathe or the majority of it anyway. So I've just taken a little scratch pass, uh, about point 0.1. Probably have a bit more speed in that, that's better. Running about 450 RPM. So I'll just take a look at that and see how much is cleaned up. Well it's cleaned up these two corners, probably halfway on this one, come to about here so yeah, yeah probably another point one or so to finish this off. So I'll run this cut through first and then probably take another point one cut just to uh, clean it up and hopefully that will be about, about it. So, I just... so I've taken another point one, I've got a bit of a hollow area here. Um, but it is taking the tops off, so it's just machining marks now, basically. I don't know how well that shows on camera. There's an area here which is a little hollow. The rest of it is all cleaned up. Near as All this side is cleaned. This corner's cleaned, this corner's cleaned, and there's a hollow in the middle. So, yeah, probably another point one. Okay, so I've just finished machining this. It took another point one, and it's now flat. And I did like a scratch pass as well, back and forth. And... It's as flat as the facing operation of this lathe will um, allow. Now, if there's any <laughs> misalignment in the carriage on the bed, that sort of thing, all these sorts of factors, and the travel of the uh, cross slide, it could have put a, a dish in here. It could be hollow in the centre, or it could be um, it could be domed in the centre. You know, we could have a uh, you know a, a peak in the centre. It might not be dead flat. So I'm going to put it on my, shall we call it, surface plate and have a little look at it and see if we got any rock and that sort of idea with it, just to verify that we're, you know, a good flat surface to start with. So I've got my um, <laughs> closest thing that I've got to a surface plate. Sprayed it with a bit of glass cleaner. It was a bit dusty, it's been sat in the shed here for a little while. That feels nice and clean. Sheet it wet and dry on the surface plate. 
Now you can see I've just with a magic marker or black marker pen, permanent marker, just done a crosshatch pattern on there. So I'm going to flick it over, put it on my surface plate, <laughs> inverted comma, surface plate. Okay, now that's telling me a story. You can probably pick up that the four corners here are polished and the centre is hollow. Now probably mostly down to the intermittent cut on the outsides. Um, but yes, I mean, it's not flat. And I don't want that, I want it to be flat. So I think I'm going to spend a bit of time now on the surface plate with a sheet of wet and dry um, and <laughs> basically get lapping it on the surface plate. So I've probably spent 10 or 15 minutes, um, you know, stoning it, uh, running it on the emery, on the uh, on the wet and dry, I should say, on the surface plate. And I've got probably 60% of the area all cleaned up. It is cleaned up around this area as well. Uh, there are some machining marks towards the centre, but obviously on the underside, on the cross slide, there's a great big hole um, in the centre, which is where the swivel plate is that the compound sits on. So it's not bearing on any surface in the centre here anyway. So I think as far as uh, flatness, I know it's dead flat. I've, I've done a rock test on it and all sorts, you know, to look for rock on my surface plate. I, I call it a surface plate. It's the closest thing I've got to one. But yeah, it's flat. Um, I did break all the edges around the outside after uh, turning it, um, you know, so that I didn't have a sharp edge on my wet and dry. Um, but yeah, it's it's flat as, as close as I need it to be flat. And it is, uh, well, it's dead smooth to the touch. So I think what I'll do now is put it up back in the chuck, this space against the chuck, and just space the other side to give me, you know, um, a true-ish flatness between top and bottom. But this side is pretty much finished. I might, you know, play with it a little bit more in the future, but we'll see. Just making sure it's flat hard against the, uh, the step in the four jaws. I think that'll about do me. There's a lot of machining going to go on on this top surface here afterwards. But I'm just going to start with something flat. Or oh, as flat as the uh, turn surface is, which we know is not that flat. But it's a lot flatter than the bandsword flat that's on there at the moment. Okay, so I'll just machine this space exactly the same procedure as you saw me do on the last one. So I've got my vice set up on a cross slide. My block in the vice all squared up. The vice is squared up. Um, I've already machined the back face, and I've now got a back face tied against the vice, which is at 90 degrees. So I know that this face and this face are square to each other and are square to the flat faces. So yeah, I'm just going to machine this down now on its width to a dimension of 79.5, which is exactly the same width as my cross leg. So I'm just uh, getting somewhere near cleaning it up now and I'll take a measurement and we'll see how much more needs to come off and I'm right on the limits uh, of travel of my cross slide at the moment I can uh, I can pretty much clean it all up but only just and I got my fly cutter set out to a diameter of about you know 82 mil so I can clean up the whole face top to bottom in one go turned out it needed a half mil to come off so I took 2.2 cuts and 1.1 cut and we're now on 79.5 so that's this space this space this space and this space all squared up this space is to size I think I need to square this space up now okay so I've set it up the other way that's the first machine face and yeah I can't get the clock the right way around but I've just been uh, tapping it around with my little tapper and I'm just about well in fact yep it's running through all across the top so if I machine this space now I know that I've got this space square to the top and bottom so, let's force one of the sides now just cleaning it up I think this pass will clean it up 
So, we need a plan. That bolt, obviously I'm going to take that plate out at a later stage, but that is going to bolt down onto the carriage there. And that's going to be the datum face and that's going to be the datum face. So this edge is going to be flush with that and that edge is going to be flush with that. And I did make it the same width, so yeah, that pretty much will be flush with that. Right. So this is the top. My plan is, obviously I've got to be careful to put some holes in the cross slide this sort of idea I'll check out underneath to make sure there's nothing in the way <laughs> four tapped holes in there I'm gonna go for M6 and I'm going to replicate them on here well in fact I'm gonna drill them on here first then I'm gonna clamp the two together take the uh, cross slide off clamp the two together and spot them through now it's quite a thickness there and I want the bolts to be quite a good fit on these uh, on the, on the uh, in the holes in the block so I think what I'm going to do is get four six mil reamed holes now the question is where do I put them now I'm going to mark them from the bottom face um, and drill them from the bottom face so if there's any wandering it's not where I want the bolts to come out right that said so a little bit of uh, jiggery and pokery is needed so the meat I've got here let me just check you can see what I'm looking at. Yes, you can. I got 15 mil there. So, let's say the centre there, 7.5. And this side I've got less because of the gib. And I've actually got there, well, 9.7. We'll call it 10 mil. So this centre line of these two screws is going to be, we'll call it five. Yep. Distance in wise. Well, I'm 7.5 in. I don't see why I don't come 7.5 back. I'm actually going to come 10 mil back. So this one, we're going to call it 10. And the block being, well, a nominal 80 mil, 79 and a half, um, 80, so 10 and a further 60. Yeah, wherever that makes out. We're going to come from the date and base, 70. So I'm 7.5 in, 10 in, 70 in. Right. I'm going to have a squint under here and see if there's any reason I can't come 70 in for that one. Let me get a rule on it, because I'm guessing at the moment. 70 in. That's in fresh air. So that one can also be 70. But this one, I have a little screw in the way here which holds this on and that goes through the gib. I don't want to cross drill the screw. So if I came in and then they got the gib then, the gib adjuster. I'm going to have to do a bit of jiggery pokery and that one can be let me just double check will 30 will I get away with that I will so this hole here is going to be an oddball at 30 not a worry not a worry and that will give me four bolts in through this bolt in this to the carriage and I'm going to have to tap the cross slide to suit. So what I'm going to do is mark this out now, back to front on the bottom. Quite easy to do. I know this is the datum, so I'm 10 down, 70 down, 7.5 in. This side, I'm 5 in, and I'm going to come 70 down and 30 down. And that'll be my four bolt holes. So I'm going to blacken this up, 
bit of magic marker, scribe some lines out, centre pop them and drill the pore holes. So I've rotated it over upside down, that's now the date and base, and this is still the date and base. I've scribed the line 7.5 in, marked the line 10 and 70, and here I've marked the line in 5mm, and I've come in 30 and 70 from this datum edge. So that's the position for my four holes. So drill press job now. Carefully sent to pop the th uh, four of these. I'll get uh, my powerful glasses on for that one and the tiny little centre pop. And we'll drill and ream those six mil. And last one. I went with a 5.7 straight through. A little thicker drill and less chance of wandering than a little thin drill. Nearly there, just be careful on the breakthrough. More like six mil with a reamer, and on the underside, we'll just deburr the holes. And in fact, I mean, while I'm at it, I'll just do the top as well, just to break edge. Okay, so those are the four holes that the M6 bolts are going to go through to bolt it to the saddle. Saddle? Uh, cross slide, we'll call it. <laughs> I suppose the next thing I need to do uh, is going to be to take the cross slide off the lathe, clamp the two together and spot those through. So I remove the cross slide, I have to take the lead nut off it, that sort of thing. Um, got it down on my... <coughs> I'm going to start calling it my surface plate. It's the closest thing I've got to it. A lot of people will say, it's not a surface plate, it's a granite chopping board. Okay, yes, it is a granite chopping board. I've inspected it, gone round it with a clock on the stand, you know, with a long reach and what have you. It's within a couple of thou all over. I mean, it does fall away on the edges a bit, um, probably up to about three thou in places. But the general area through the middle, it's, you know, it's within a thou on a sweep everywhere. So it's the closest thing I've got. Okay. Um, down hard, down hard, clamp it up, tool makers clamp. So I've got my data edge flush there. Right. Make sure there's no, no, it isn't. I thought I had a little, uh, little something under there. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's set up and clamped. So I'll spot as many holes as these can get. I might have to put it on a couple of parallels to avoid the... Uh, the clamp which is sticking out the bottom but I'm sure I can do that um, and spot through now I've tried a six mil drill through the six mil ho uh, six mil reamed holes and it does fit quite snugly through without binding um, so yeah I'm going to spot down with the six mil drill in four places then I'm going to remove this block and then go through with the five mil drill for the tapping I managed to uh, put it in such a way that it's just the toolmaker's clamp's just hanging over the table. Oh, my finger slipped off. Right. That's it. See, it's just putting a, uh, a divot in the surface. Might have to do a bit of jiggery pokery to reach this one. Okay.
was thinking of doing these holes uh, blind um, because it goes straight through into the slideway um, but I would imagine that the um, the spacer block is going to be on you 99% of the time and if I ever got a job where it's not on there um, I can always put some grub screws in the holes to stop any uh, dirt or swarf going down so yeah um, I could have done them blind the holes but uh, I try and avoid blind holes where possible Oop. talking and not paying attention the other thing I have noticed, the underside of this slideway, um, these are the two oil holes from the, uh, the little oil lubrication points, but there's no um, oil ways um, in the slide. I get, when I took it off, there was a good covering of oil all the way along, but uh, yeah, I'm surprised that they haven't uh, ground in some oil ways, so I might, I might have a look at doing that. Uh, future little job it could do with some oil ways in there really because I do oil it regularly um, I know it's not a big distance but it would be better I'm sure they have got a nice chamfer on the underside of them but I'm sure it would be better with a you know a, a passage you know a, like a ball nose cutter a little uh, rotary burr or something and do a groove in there yeah something for the future so while I'm here while I'm at it deeper the underside Quite a large jumper on there, I think. Um, I don't want the thread breaking through onto the surface and leaving an edge. That'll do nicely. And I think we'll just have a little one on the top. Again, I don't want the thread sharp on the surface. Sometimes where I got a thread on a surface, I'll um, actually put like the six mil down in, uh, drill down in, about a millimeter or so, just so that the thread starts below surface, so that you don't get that sort of sharp edge of the thread. But those four nice big shampers should do the job just the same. I normally tap these holes by hand, uh, you know, tap wrench, just go straight down in through, maybe use a tap guide, something like that. But I want these to be straight, straight. So I've just clamped it all up in position, brought the taper down to pick up the hole and I'm just going to run the tap using the drill chuck as a, as a guide. It's fairly easy to tap this cast iron so, so I'm just going to get the tap you know well and truly started. So I've got the block um, in position, um, the bolts are going to fit down through these holes, they're going to have to be counterboard to whatever depth they end up at. Um, tool post is going to sit on top um, when it gets to final thickness, and the final thickness I'll make up the existing uh, compound, and I'm going to pocket out in here, leaving this material and this material, I'm going to pocket out an L shape, let me see sharpie yeah uh, you know sort of six mil there and that's going to be well it's actually going to be 19 and a half so i'm going to pocket out this area of the tool post and machine it down I might end up having to put a, a circle in that corner something like that the six mil wall here and 19 and a half mil wall there And what that will do will allow the tool post to sit down to its correct height. Um, so obviously I'll machine it down to the correct thickness so that it's back at centre height and I haven't got a mess about, you know, it's you know within close enough anyway. Right. What I'm going to do then at a later stage is to bore out a hole in here to replicate. Let's show you the compound. To replicate that, so I'm going to bore a hole out that diameter, um, probably five millimeters deep. Then I'm going to drill and tap it out with this size thread. So if I make up a single piece, a bolt then, with um, a thread on one side, that register on it, and then a pl plain diameter, and then a thread on the top. 
I'll be able to screw it into the hole, into a tapped hole, and when I come to put my tool post back on the top, because I drilled this in the correct space for the nut that I've got, so that it tightens up around here somewhere, I won't know with the new one. So what it will allow me to do is to put it on, try it, and say for instance it ends up locking in that position, which isn't where I want it, I can always machine a little bit off the shoulder, off the underside of the shoulder, and tighten it down in further um, to bring the handle round to where I want it. So that's that's my thinking on that. Rather than um, leave a circular boss stuck up out of the casting here, I'm going to machine it flat and then put a register in it, the correct diameter, and then turn up a part that will drop in that register and then screw down into a tapped hole below the register to act as my clamp bolt. So what I'll have then, I'll have to obviously um, fit my block up in position. Um, I know that the register here is spot on in relation to the hole because it was all machined as one. So what I can do is um, put my tool post in position, tight against the two shoulders that I've machined, dead tight against them, clock up the bore in the bottom to get a center, then remove the block, I've already got a position, and I can bore it out in the four draw chuck. So that's the sort of forward planning that I'm doing. But what that will mean is that I've got a circular register and two shoulders that it's tight against um, that won't allow it to rotate rock move in any way, shape or form. These four six mil bolts will lock this bolt solid, the cross slide, and the tool post will be absolutely solid on top of that as well. So that's my thinking and my plan going forward. Well, I think that's about it for this episode, guys, this part one. A fair bit of machining done and a fair bit still to do, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, we'll get there in the end and we will have a, uh, a really rigid setup for the tool post. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing and we'll see you all very soon. Cheers now.